Is the grizzly reaper mowing? Yes! The danger must be growing, for the rowers keep on rowing, and they're certainly not showing any signs that they are slowing! Willy Wonka is allegedly a wonderful chocolate making man who has a factory that no one has been to for years. Nobody ever goes in. Nobody ever comes out. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, he releases five golden tickets into the world, summoning children to his factory. A factory which no one has been to in years, to meet a man who no one has seen in years. Does this bizarre act of kindness, in fact, have darker reasoning? The suspense is terrible. He, he's gonna go this time. I hope it'll last. He, go on, boy, go on. There's a theory that suggests Willy Wonka is actually a serial killer and was planning to murder all of the golden ticket winners. Now this theory will only be for the Gene Wilder version, as the Johnny Depp version directly contradicts the theory. It could be said that Willy Wonka hates the children. In fact, he hates a lot of things in his life. He hates that people kept trying to steal his recipes, and despite being one of the most famous and well-loved men in the world, he doesn't really seem to gain any satisfaction from it. He spends most of his time locked away in his factory constantly working. He doesn't have a personal life. He doesn't have a wife or kids of his own. He seems deeply depressed. He's always smiling, but his smile always seems fake and usually downright sarcastic. He's just barely able to hide his contempt for the kids. A few more tests. How do you make them? I'm a trifle deaf in this ear. Speak a little louder next time. Now one of the reasons that Wonka hates the children is because they don't do as they're told. Wonka planned everything from the beginning. The victory? Accidents? What kind of accidents? I didn't know we had to sign anything for this tour. I can't see what it says in the bottom. Everything in the factory is something that a kid would love, but they weren't supposed to touch anything unless he told them to. All the children, even Charlie, broke his rules. One of the parents even noticed that there was something off with Wonka and wanted to leave almost immediately. However, Wonka wouldn't allow for it. Oh, what is this, Wonka? Some kind of fun house? Why, having fun? I've had enough. I'm not going in there. Come on, Violet, we're getting out of here. Oh, you can't get out backwards. You've got to go forwards to go back. Better press on. It's time we talk about what happened inside the factory that makes me believe that Wonka did in fact murder all of the children, including Charlie. Augustus Gloop is eliminated first. If you've seen the movie, then you'll know that Augustus Gloop falls into the chocolate river. Wonka tells us you'll be just fine. However, as pointed out by his mum, the child cannot swim. He is deprived of oxygen while underneath the chocolate. We then see him in a vacuum tube, which is applying extreme suction, thereby pulling all the air from his lungs, which we can clearly see. When Augustus's mother asks Wonka to do something, he says, Don't just stand there, do something! Help. Police. Murder. He also tells the Oompa Loompa to look out for the boy who is on his way to the fudge room, because he might accidentally go into the boiler. And since Wonka decided to use the kazoo method of factory communication rather than actual walkie-talkies, as well as the fact that Mr. Gloop is travelling at a large rate of speed, there's no way they got to him in time. Next, we have Violet Beauregard. Wonka actually provokes Violet, knowing that she is a champion gum chewer. It's the most amazing, fabulous, sensational gum in the whole world. What's so fab about it? This little piece of gum is a three-course dinner. Bull! No, roast beef, but I haven't got it quite right yet. He does mention, as Violet is turned into a blueberry, they all become blueberries. Instead of warning her, 
of the side effects beforehand, there is very little chance that Violet could have survived this, as Wonka does also warn of an explosion. Peruka Salt is his third victim. In no way does Wonka try to help out when she falls down the chute. He only tells her dad what happens to the garbage. Where's she gone? Where all the other bad eggs go? Down the garbage chute. Oh, the garbage chute. <laughs> where, where did it lead to? To the furnace. <laughs> to furnace! <laughs> She'd be sitting like a sausage. Well, not necessarily. She could be stuck just inside the tube. Inside the... <laughs> Hold on! Veruca! Sweetheart! Daddy's coming! The last note she sings, in her number, gives us an idea of the distance which she fell. A rough estimate would put it at least four to five stories. However, we don't actually hear her land, which could imply that she falls much further. To make things worse, we know that she will only be cushioned by solid golden eggs. It's virtually impossible to survive the fall. Mike TV is Wonka's fourth and possibly final victim. Wonka clearly didn't care about Mike endangering himself. Look at me, I'm gonna be the first person in the world to be sent by television! Mike, get away from that thing! Stop, don't, come back! Mike may have been able to make it out of Wonka's torture chamber alive if it wasn't for Wonka wanting to send him to be stretched, which surely would end up killing him. There is one more child that entered the factory, and it seems he managed to evade Wonka's torture chamber. I'm of course talking about Charlie. Charlie and his grandpa were enticed by Wonka into drinking a highly experimental juice that makes you float. It's important to note that it was conveniently placed under fans that surely would have decapitated them both if it wasn't for Grandpa Joe burping, revealing the one flaw that saved their lives. One thing to notice before each kid does the thing they're not supposed to do, Wonka does warn them. Stop, don't, come back. I don't care. Oh, I wouldn't do that. I really wouldn't. This is what justifies the murder in his mind. In his mind, he's not killing the children, they're killing themselves by choosing to break rules. Wonka insisted at the end of the movie that all the children lived, but unlike the Johnny Depp movie, we never actually see the children leave the factory. My dear boy, I promise you they'll be quite all right. When they leave here, they'll be completely restored to their normal, terrible old selves but maybe they'll be a little bit wiser for the wear. Anyway, don't worry about them. Wonka established in the very first scene that he was not to be trusted. He is not an honest character. He uses deceit and manipulation to test the kids. So should we really trust him when he claims at the end that all the kids are fine and restored to their normal selves? Now to the murder-suicide. There's two different ways to take the ending. There's the cop-out way to say that the glass elevator shattered and instantly killed Charlie, his grandfather and Wonka, and the rest is just a fantasy, but that's too simple. Instead you could take the ending literally and say the glass didn't break and it actually did float off into the sky. First of all, regardless of whether the ending did or did not happen, I think it's extremely obvious that Wonka didn't know the elevator would actually go through the ceiling. He literally says so himself. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. Faster, faster. If we don't pick up enough speed, we'll never get through. Get through what? Aha. Uh -huh. But this roof is made of glass. It'll shatter into a thousand pieces. But we'll be cut to ribbons. Probably. So at first, he was upset that Charlie broke the rules and didn't die. But he was impressed that he figured out how the floating potion worked. I think he was planning on killing himself with the elevator after the event was over, but he decides to take Charlie and Grandpa with him in the elevator because they're the only ones that managed to survive his trap, so he lets them share his final moments. We never see where the elevator goes, or if it will continue floating into the Earth's atmosphere, which will inevitably kill them. 